The following podcast contains mature content. The views and opinions expressed by the host are not necessarily those of the host. Listener discretion is advised. No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it wrong. Welcome to the Smack and Raw Podcast, episode 254. I am your host, the patron saint of podcasting, the warden Matt Ritter, and I am here again for the second week in a row after a two-week hiatus with uh, my friend, the Sultan of Spitter Swallow, and someone who is now only behind Katie one point in the race for Pornhub Poppy, Daddy Delgado Vince, how you doing? I'm the Pornhub Poppy. That is home, Matt. That is home. Now, right now, you're losing. You're not shit right now. Oh, it's okay. It's all for anticipation. You know, you got to build suspense. Before we introduce our guest, I do want to say I do appreciate the fact that in your, your endeavor to become Pornhub Poppy, that apparently all of your porn watching habits involve people that look like me now, um, which is information I received just before the show. Very flattering. I don't know what you're talking about. It's true. <laughs> it happened. I can don't I can don't, don't feel the false narrative. Don't and if you guys burn. heard that voice, listen, when you're doing the first episode after a five-year anniversary, when you're doing something like that, you gotta look to your blood. You gotta look to your friends, you gotta look to your buddies, you gotta look to the cafeteria, ladies and gentlemen, from Young Kings Wrestling, the Thespian. T.C. Fontaine. How's it going, sir? I'm glad to be back. It's been, you know how long it's been? <laughs> yeah, it's how been long a long has time. It been? Very long I know, time. I know you know the episode number and everything. Off the top of my head, I do not. I, I do not remember, but I know you and I talked about it. It's been over a year. Oh, yeah, it's been, yeah. Yeah. It's been a while, so I'm glad to be back. <clears throat> Ain't been on Pornhub in a minute since they purged everybody. I think that was the last time, honestly. It might have been before then. <laughs> yeah, you were pre-purge, I think. Eesh. Which is crazy because we've been back for a while since then. So yeah, no, dude. I've I've come over, I've done some shows with Young Kings. I got to do uh some podcasts with Reek and you for Havoc Hour. Uh, you know, I, I am your resident uh co-host for pay-per-views which i've been slacking on uh we'll fix that this weekend we'll talk about that but uh yeah no i it's been a long time since we've had you on i'm glad uh you were free and we were able to make that work for sure man and i'm moving this weekend so i had to fit it in before everything got crazy oh yeah should be packing but i'm joining y'all i'm I'm, I'm prioritizing y'all over priorities which Which is why like i said you look to the cafeteria Oh yeah, we live. No, we're not. we are not live. But I mean, we're not you... live. You know what I mean? Like you know, <laughs> it's black people slang. Like I mean, right? We, no, I get that, we, but it, that's a that is a great point because, ladies and gentlemen, uh, within the next couple of weeks, possibly as soon as next week, the Smacking It Raw podcast will be live streaming on Twitch and YouTube going forward for these Friday night episodes, so you can come and watch us live or you can wait until the episode drops. Uh, That is something that we are now going to start doing going forward, uh, as well as we're revamping our Patreon to give you guys a little more. uh, Return to Wrestling will become a Patreon exclusive for $1. You can go listen to me and Travis talk about WCW. That way you guys are supporting us and our show, and we're not giving it to you for free, but we already have, so you kind of know what to expect. And if you still want that content, we're only going to charge you a dollar for it bang for your buck as well as a bunch of other stuff but once all of that is finalized we'll get into that more first and foremost before we get into news and rumors we're going to do what we do every week because not only do we have young kings wrestling here who have made those amazing 
NWO style Black Lives Matter t-shirts that you have seen me in and Vince in and Katie in and Reek in and TC in and the background that is now behind him, which you can get at ykwrestling.com. And all of those proceeds go into a fund, which is given to the people who are affected by Oh, did you guys free? Yeah, you guys froze for a second. No, All right. You, you froze. Yeah. Well, back. technically, I'm recording. So on my end, you froze. I'm good. Um, anyway, the proceeds go into a fund, and all of that money is then donated to GoFundMe's of people who have lost a loved one to racial injustice, who need help with funeral costs and other things like that. So please support that cause. Go get those shirts. I got a black and red one because I'm special and it's not for sale yet. But if you push hard enough, what? No, yeah, I'm. I'm saying like y'all, y'all gotta, you know, y'all gotta. It's exclusive. It's exclusive to Matt, you know, and, and some of Matt's friends. I ain't, I ain't gonna say which friends, but they are exclusive, and y'all gotta want them. And y'all gotta, y'all gotta buy these first, cause like y'all, ain't, y'all ain't bought one of these in a while. Like I said on our show a couple weeks ago, if you bought one before, buy another one. I know the other one you got probably faded. The, the 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 lettering probably peeling off mm-hmm. so like re-up i gotta re-up. buy another one too get a pink one for breast cancer awareness yeah we got the breast cancer awareness ones what are you doing yeah. Vince? I'm, and I'm we, messing we, with we're doing you're doing a promotion <laughs> right now and you play see this is the problem this this is see i told i told katie i was gonna give her a few weeks off let her rest. I appreciate all the hard work she's done. Also give Vince a chance to show up every week and get his lead back. Cause it is unfair to him that she is available all the time. And I just keep bringing her on. But, uh, the reason I bring her on is cause he's always like, he's going off having quickies, just dicking around while I'm trying to do important shit, like promoting the pro wrestling pro choice t-shirts that we also have on sale at Teespring. And all of that money is donated to the women's reproductive rights assistance project. So go get yourself a Black Lives Matter shirt. Go get yourself a Pro Wrestling Pro Choice t-shirt and uh, support some great causes and get some awesome merch while you're at it. And those are available in all sorts of different colors as well. So you can get one from us. You can get one from Katie in a different color. And that goes to Planned Parenthood. So, uh, yeah, money from us going all over to support those who need the support. Uh, So support us and them. Yeah. For the record, we don't we don't we don't promote the Black Lives Matter organization itself. Yeah, so not no money is with going the to them. If that's if that's something that's holding y'all up from buying something, no, no, no. It's actual personal people. You see a GoFundMe and it's for one specific person, and it could just be it, it don't even gotta be racial injustice. It's just put you know, putting it forward. Somebody needs it for something. You know, somebody has a GoFundMe for their kid to go on a, a trip abroad in high school, and and it's a black kid. I'm gonna support it. Like, I love seeing the younger brothers like at the AAU. They they fundraising for their basketball team at Walmart, and they stop and ask me for some money. Like, I can't turn it down. Mm-hmm. So I give it to them. So it's kind of in the vein of that. I'm just you know I'm just putting it forward for myself. Like I'm taking care of my community the best way that I can which is all the more reason to go donate. Um, so Jonathan Gresham lost his Ring of Honor world title to mm. Claudio uh, at Death Before. Dis- yeah. Did you have something, Vince? I was going to call him Masicholi if he didn't say his last name. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Masicholi, man. Lost that title. <laughs> and then apparently beforehand got into an argument with Tony Khan was not happy with the situation was not the greatest match from what I've heard, uh, went a little over 10 minutes and he has asked for his AEW ring of honor release from Tony Khan said, fuck you. Let me go. Thoughts. I don't know. John was pretty short, man. (laughs) Very short. About as short as he is. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Love those there. Uh, uh, Jonathan Gresham and Tony Khan got into a little scuffle. <laughs> Listen, Take me a minute to get that. <laughs> in all honesty, it, I don't know what went on behind the scenes, what he was promised, what he thought was going to go down. And if it didn't go down, like if he was told, hey, 
you're our champion. We're going to run with you. And then all of a sudden Claudio came on. They're like, yeah, well, you know what? We changed our mind. We're going to go with him now. That pissed him off. Whatever the deal was that changed between when he signed his contract and death before dishonor that upset him or made him unhappy. Um, if you're unhappy at your job, go somewhere else. Like if they're not treating you, you know, your worth. And if they are not treating you within your worth, get the fuck out. Like go find someone that will. Do we have the embarrassing moment? Say what? Oh no, she all right. I thought we had an update on, on our no, no, no. I was okay. just told to shut the fuck up because I'm too loud. Damn. <laughs> wow. Well, By not your in... landlord or no, Melissa told me, Hey, well... can you keep it quiet? She's trying to sleep. Oh, she's trying to sleep now. She was just watching Modern Family and talking about your porn habits, and now she's trying to sleep. <laughs> well, Melissa, so as she watches TV while she sleeps, it helps her go to sleep. So mm. It's a whole process. Okay. Yeah. You guys catch the biography on the Bellas? Not yet. Ah, I haven't watched any of those or any of the rivals. Like I got them all on the DVR though. So I'm all caught up. Uh, the Bellas one is great because you hear all that chatter about how the Bellas shouldn't have been inducted into the Hall of Fame, and this it really lays out right. their entire legacy. And if you've watched that biography and you still say. Oh, the Bellas didn't deserve it. First off, if you said the Bellas didn't deserve it, obviously either you weren't watching or you just hate women and women's wrestling. That's my personal hey, opinion. Man. Yeah. But after watching this biography, like if you don't see everything that they've done and contributed to the business and why they were inducted, then you just don't want to fucking see it. This was fantastic. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Like when they first announced him for the Hall of Fame before the pandemic and all that, we talked about that on our show and we just laid it out. Like, look at all the women currently on the roster nxt and main roster who got into wrestling by watching total bellas and watching total deals bianca belair being probably the prime example Mm -hmm. she became a wrestling fan off of total divas and like without the bellas that doesn't happen you don't get that you don't get the the legions of fans that came (laughs) in and became women's wrestling fans and pushed for the women's evolution itself you don't get the evolution pay-per-view. You don't get women's Royal Rumbles. You don't get anything that happened since 2015, really, without the Bellas coming around. There seems to be like this misconception that I guess the Bellas were perfectly okay with having like three minute, two minute matches and wanted to be like arm candy for the rock as like like GMs or anything. No, they didn't want to do that. They wanted to like actually wrestle. Like in, you see like Nikki getting better. You see the passion for me, but I'm not going to say Brie got too better. She, she improved from when she started, but um, yeah, it's like, like you were saying to see with Bianca Belair, like my girl, she don't, she don't watch wrestling or like, but she knows about Total Divas. She knows about Total Bellas and she actually follows the Bellas. So there's that allure to it. So like they actually contribute to the business, you know, and to discredit them, it's just foolish. They actually said that they left WWE because they were used as arm candy and all that stuff that Vince just talked about. And it was total divas and that offer and them being like, all right, so this is going to showcase the women and we're going to be able to show what we're doing and all that. And that's why they came back and they actually reached out to them and said they couldn't do that without them. But Mm -hmm. um, so I was going to come on here and I was going to be all disrespectful like I normally am about New Japan. And I was going to say something along the lines of, oh, New Japan is in partnership with Stardom for the ICUP People with Ovaries Championship. But in reality, the IWGP Women's Championship between Stardom and New Japan is a big deal. So I'm going to call it what it is and give it a little bit of the respect that it deserves instead of doing my whole gimmick. So uh, they did announce that. Very cool because... That has always been my one of one of my many knocks against New Japan is, you know, you guys all talk about how great New Japan is, are the same people that talk about how they don't treat the women right, but New Japan doesn't have any women on their show and don't give them the time or start them the time that they give the men. Here we are. They are now making an IWGP championship in cooperation with stardom, and there will be a women's IWGP champion. Mercedes is going to hold that title real soon. <laughs> maybe because that we'll is see. the next bit of news Martina. is apparently uh <laughs> with with the new regime that is now in place uh overtures have been made to both mercedes 
and Trinity uh, to come back into the fold now that the creepy old man is out the fucking door. Both of them. Lauren Addis is out of here, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys think they're coming back? I mean, with Stephanie around, yeah, I, I figure it's just a matter of time because, I mean, where else would they go, honestly? Realistically, where else they go? I, I must say that I think Sasha, Mercedes, whatever, I think she's going to take a break. I think she might take a break before she returns. I wouldn't Apparently be surprised. She can't, she's not taking any bookings until next year. Exactly. So, obviously, that lets you know that she doesn't want to wrestle. So maybe she just wants a break from it all. She already took one break. Why not take another mental health break? I'm all about them. And both uh, of them, like I'm pretty sure they're both enjoying any time on the road. They don't oh, worry. definitely. Uh, you see it, like they they feel they feel and look so much happier and healthier mentally and physically. Uh, Naomi, I'd be more inclined to say that she's more more likely to like return sooner than Sasha. Both are very likely to return, but Naomi, you have her husband there and you have the possibility of Ashley like giving her some promise something needed to chew on either give her a singles run you can pair her up with a Liv Morgan or you can pair her up with a Bianca Belair both matchups are two that I'd love to see maybe you can add her to the bloodline which is what a lot of people have been wanting to see is have her get a little bit more of a heel edge and uh if not that, maybe you can team her up with Tamina and have both of them be a tag team, fight for those tag titles, and be part of the bloodline. Or, I don't know, like, there's options with Naomi that you can bring her back more easily. With with Sasha, I feel like she's more likely to be like, yeah, I'll come back whenever the fuck I want to come back. So Royal Rumble or Raw after Mania? For she Sasha? I wouldn't be shocked for this Monday, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> At this point. SummerSlam? Someone takes out Ronda, gets replaced. No, I need Bailey back at SummerSlam. I'm tired of yeah. it. Yeah, no, Bailey's got to come back. It's yeah. been over a year now. I'm, I'm we know she's ready. She's been ready. Is she? Is she? She's been ready. She's been oh, ready. yeah. She's been ready. She's ready. Six oh, months people. now, bro. <laughs> so I'm going to tie these two things in together. Uh, apparently, along with stepping down from the company, retiring, and all of the stuff, I saw reports that Vince has forfeited all of his stock which means he is no longer CEO. He is no longer head of creative. And technically, if he actually forfeited his stock, he is no longer owner of the company. You don't believe that, TC? One, like, how, how would people know? Because if, if something like that happens, it's not really reported instantly. So, like, it's not going to be immediately reported. Who said that? I own the stock. I, I'm, I haven't heard it. You own the stock. I'm like, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying like nobody. I'd have to. I literally, no, I read it. No overtures about it at all. Like, and put it in my notes. Um, I don't normally take down sources because you never know with these people. So that's true. I don't trust them. I just put this in and then we speculate on whether or not to tell the truth, which we're going to do a lot of tonight because it probably did happen. They just haven't reported it officially yet. And so then my question is. Is it a race between uh, Nick and Stephanie to buy up as much of that stock as possible? Well, I'm pretty sure if, if it was a if it was a situation like that, it was going down to Stephanie and probably Triple H. Just staying in the family, like it's not going. Yeah, yeah. you want to keep the they family know better than that. Yeah, they know majority better. shareholders. You know, Vince had to pass on some some sooner or later. So you know they had that succession plan in place. It's not happening. I mean, a lot of people do feel like there, there like could be some like Vince is still working things behind the scenes. It's just not Obviously. official, you know. He might just be sending texts to Stephanie, like make sure you get these replays in, make sure Theory <laughs> gets enough screen time. Damn, damn, it, damn it! Do not call it a belt. It is a championship. God <laughs> damn know? it, Stephanie! Why are you leaving me on red? <laughs> the fuck is Tommaso Ciampa doing in the main event? Which brings us to, so Michael LaShawn Willis, who is one of our Patreon subscribers, who submits a uh, topic for us to talk about every month because he is subscribed to that tier. And he also runs our Facebook over facebook.com slash group slash smack and raw. Wanted to know what the monumental changes uh, were going to occur now that Vince is no longer running WWE. And we decided to roll that into 
Vince's six star picks yes. where we're going to talk about the top six biggest things we think are going to change with Vince no longer in charge. Well, I've never been in charge, but I'll get, That's to, the true. List. <laughs> I'll get to the list. I was, I was forgot to tell you, let me share it. Cause I wanted to play the little like Drake six sound bite, but what's done is done. Uh, all right. So I'm going to kick things off with my first thing is less Vince McMahon tropes, like multiple replays, like of stuff that we've already seen on that same given episode championship contenders matches hopefully that's the thing of the past banning certain moves or certain words that the commentators and wrestlers can't say like we just made fun of it like calling a belt a championship title uh saying WWE universe instead of fans uh they said match- wrestling on smackdown tonight I, I spoiler i miss smackdown because i was busy at work with the illinois lottery or the mega millions whatever so i couldn't get out of work um but yeah so like there's going to be a little bit more of a loosening it's going to feel more like nxt black and gold in terms of like the product on screen that's what i feel like it's going to be less Vince McMahon stuff and you're going to see more Shawn michaels triple h type wrestling you don't what think so you tc I'll, I'll wait all well, right no, you're up next so what's what's on your list uh, you done vince well, I'm going one, but I'm, I'm not sure I how will. we're doing this. Okay. I thought I was just going to list off my stuff and you guys were going to like. Well, you said like, I'll kick it off, which means I'll mm-hmm. go first and get my first pick. You didn't say here's my here's my six. If you want to do all six, do all six. This is your your baby. Six star picks is your deal. OK, I just figured we go around the room. But if you want to bang out all six, bang out all six. No, no, let's go around the room, like after every six, every, every pick, and then we'll go to the next one after we're done going around the room. Yeah, so, I, I, I took it a different route, actually. I'm, uh, I'm gonna say the things that I'm not looking forward to. Uh, I'm not looking forward to 50 level kickouts. That's a real number, by the way. 50 level kickouts per match, uh, like we kind of got in Drew and Sheamus earlier. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves of the old NXT, and it's showing right off the bat. And yeah, I'm I'm gonna be getting annoyed watching wrestling. I, I already know, but uh, yeah, that's one thing. I don't like it. Okay, it takes me out of matches. I get matches what you mean. Too, long, <laughs> too many kickouts. It's just like let's let's get to the point. I'm trying to remember which one it was, but it was Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole for the NXT Championship where Johnny beat Adam Cole. New York, man. New York. That one pissed me off because it's like, I bro, it. like I Johnny it. Gargano got hit by a truck. And, and it was like 36 out. minutes long. Yeah. So, okay, I feel you on that one. Okay, so we both went in different directions. I like this. There's a contrast here. I'm going to go with my number two. I'm going to say that they're, the number two thing that's going to change now that Vince McMahon is gone is better continuity between NXT and main roster. We saw the inklings of that happening with 2.0 being a thing. Like guys like Brock Breaker, you'd see them just come up, like have a little cup of tea on main roster. But I think that's going to lead to like less gimmick alterations, like what you've seen with LA Knight turning into Max Dupree or Walter becoming Gunther or Piper Nevin becoming Dewdrop, stuff like that. I think you're going to see a little bit more of wrestlers staying a little bit more true to their NXT character because I think he's still, uh, like, Triple H is going to have a better communication between all creative teams. He's going to want that continuity because it just makes sense. I think that's one of the big things. I didn't get to give mine, but... uh, Oh, I thought it was just me and TC because you said you didn't have it. No, I told you I had them, but I didn't... What I told you was... I don't think there's 18 separate things and we all might have the same shit on the li- list. I didn't know TC went the route he did, so it may be different. Um, <clears throat> so I, I will give mine and then we'll go back to TC and then we'll go back to me and then we'll go back to Vince. Uh, right. <laughs> we're It's something that I think we're already starting to see. Uh, there are certain superstars that are going to kind of revert back to their NXT roots. And we're seeing with the War Raiders, which we're going to talk about later. Uh, We saw a little bit of it with Alexa Bliss, uh, who seemed a little rejuvenated on Monday Night Raw with her role, which, again, we'll talk about in a little while. Um, But I I feel like some of those superstars that are Triple H's kids are kind of going to get 
the spotlight that they might not have been getting and get maybe a little more shine uh, than they have been getting. We might start seeing guys like Ricochet portrayed the way he was, which worked in NXT, but has not worked on the main roster where he isn't talking as much. He is just impressing us with flipping out of the ring in front of people and staring them down and showcasing his athleticism more so than his mic skills, stuff like that. So I think we're going to see a little reverting back of some of these characters to what did work for the characters who haven't been working on the main roster who came up from NXT. Okay. Fair. I also had that. Yeah, one of my lists. Go ahead, TC. Oh yeah. Uh, another thing I'm not looking forward to is because the track record itself, it proves itself. Bianca Belair is not going to win any more title matches because she never won a title match booked by Triple H <laughs> ever. <laughs> so until that changes, I have zero reason to believe that it's going to change. Oh my God. And so I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. I'm going to be very on edge the entire time because I don't want her to lose tomorrow. Not yet. I don't know who she would lose to at this point, but no, not yet. Ooh, that's a good question. Who would you book to beat Bianca? Who, me? Yeah. Um, there's, there's nobody really right now that I can think of. I mean, I I don't want to do it just because it's that WWE trope, but Alexa? Rhea? Rhea, if she, Rhea, yeah, Rhea no, she's probably back. the only one. Yeah, that's the only one. Eos but again, Shirai returning? She's still down in NXT. She's got to get the call up for first. Now. For now. Um, My second one is, this is more so something I'm hoping for that I don't know. But uh, I'd like to see some of the shit that we had down in NXT that we never got on the main roster, like war games. Um, And maybe some use out of those WCW pay-per-views that NXT has been using that WWE hasn't been. So war games, Halloween Havoc, instead of giving us Hell in a Cell in October or whatever the fuck, like they did in like fucking May this year for some reason. Using some of that that seasonal pay-per-view takeover stuff that we got down in NXT. I'd like to see carried up to the main roster. I always thought it was much better to have a seasonal pay-per-view that could feature certain matches than having money in the bank matches and hell in a cell matches and TLC, because that's what the pay-per-view is called. So we have to have them and reverting back a little bit to some of that stuff. And that's more so something I'm hoping is going to happen. I like that. That's That's good. good. That's a good one. I didn't even think of that one. And I'm mad that I didn't. That's actually uh, something original because, like, this is, I've been seeing this conversation all week long for the last seven days, and nobody said anything really different. Everybody's saying the same stuff. Okay. Well, yeah. hopefully what I'm about to say next is not been spewed by a bunch of people. Uh, I think the women's division will have a better platform across the board on both main roster and NXT. Raw and SmackDown are going to have their own separate divisions. They're actually going to have storylines centric outside of the WWE uh, of their uh, main title because nine times out of ten if you're not vying for the championship or you're not mixed mingled with the women's tag titles when they existed still you weren't really doing much you were just doing random tag team matches I think there's going to be more consistency there you saw Nikki Cross and and Asuka have a great program you saw Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez like they were like like Io Shirai and uh, why am I trying to blank on people? But you get the point. The women's division is just going to have a lot more of a highlight, a lot more focus, like like it was back in the days of the four horsewomen being the mainstay of NXT and even after the awards with, with Asuka, Shayna Baszler, Ember Moon, Io Shirai, the works. And that's going to go into the tag team division. I think... Vince McMahon being gone and Triple H being head of creative, I think that tag team, women's tag team tournament actually has a good chance of actually being a, a real thing now that with Triple H at the helm. So that's my number three. Right. TC? Bouncing off of that, uh, one thing I would like to see, Evolution 2. I think it has a, a way better possibility now uh, than it did before. I, I have no reason why they just decided to, to stop it, but now we got Stephanie running shit 
and we got Triple H booking it. I mean, we might even get like a May Young tournament back too. Oh yeah, and the perfect time to do so is uh, when they start doing their Saudi shows. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the men being back. You could just like focus most of the women talent on Evolution Two Point or Evolution Two or whatever. Yeah. And what you said with the May Young tournament was actually one of mine. Is Triple H was big on tag tournaments, May Young tournament, Cruiserweight Classic. We saw a lot of tournaments down there. We might start seeing tournaments back up on the main roster, which after they kind of killed King of the Ring, tournaments in WWE have not really been a thing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, do we even count the mess that was the King of the Ring and the Queen's Crown tournaments? Do we really want to count those? I mean, King of the Ring was cool. I mean, if I mean, other than Xavier winning, like if you ask Travis, if it's not done in the same night, it doesn't count. You know what? Uh, listen, because the entire tournament wasn't done in the same night when Austin won it. It was, I think, just the semifinals and the finals, or maybe it was the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the finals. Like they didn't have the whole tournament. Most of the stuff was done on Raw, like, like the preliminary matches. The qualifiers and preliminaries were done on Raw, and then I think it was the semifinals and the finals were done on the pay-per-view. So, yeah, they wrestled a couple times, but they didn't do the whole tournament on the pay-per-view. And that was back in 96. They did that with Rock 2 and O2. Yeah. So, I would like to see that, though. I would like to see, like, a tournament, like a whole, like, let's say King of the Ring returns as the pay-per-view. You know, they just do the whole King of the Ring tournament that night. I think it'd be cool. Uh, they'll probably like i said they'll probably do the semifinals and the finals in the same yeah, night but i don't they're not gonna I mean. do the whole tournament no no not the whole tournament but like the majority or like a good bulk of it all right uh that was all of y'all three right so i'm next sure okay <laughs> number four uh more consistent long-term storytelling I, as you saw with triple h he likes to like weave a story through multiple weeks build that up he might have overdone it with like Tommaso Champ and Johnny Gargano for one example, but he likes the long term storytelling of aspects uh, like in just wrestling, just like not in ring, but outside the ring too. And with Vince McMahon, that's and his whole regime. A lot of people, that's one of the things they were, they were complaining about, like no long term, not long term storytelling. And one thing that was coming out recently was that the reason Vince McMahon kept doing matches over and over again is because they, he forgot they even happened. So we might see less of that. So like there might be like an actual reason why things are happening, you know, like for instance, which we'll talk about, which I'm sure is going to be the biggest swallow of the week for Matthew is Riddle getting his ass stomped on. Ah, uh, No spoilers. No spoilers. But if you know Matt, you know Matt. Um, uh, but yeah, like that seems like long term term story because that match got scrapped and now it's booked for a later date because apparently Riddle needs a win, Seth needs <clears throat> a win. What? Literally just said no spoilers and you were like talking right, about the whole thing. Hella, we're gonna like all right. I'm we get it. Long term storytelling. TC. I, I would like to preface that they did do long term storytelling. Just mm-hmm. not to people's liking, or not okay. as much. That's that, I think that was, that's fair. Both things are true, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, I want to say there was zero long term turn. A lot of no, not film. not you. A lot of people on the internet definitely like to act like there's absolutely none. Uh, and that's not true. Uh, but my uh, my next thing that uh, I'm not gonna say I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not looking forward to it either. I think there's going to be a lot more of a theory on TV. Contrary to what y'all may think, I see a lot of people saying, like, now that Vince is gone, that was his project. Forgetting the fact that Triple H hired him in the first place. Yes. And, and kept him safe. And kept him in good hands. Uh, a couple years ago, if you know, you know. Uh, Triple like H's first show. Oh, God. Don't say his name, dog. Any, I got so. All right, let's move on. Um. I got so mad just now, dog. I'm so disappointed still. But uh, one, Triple H hired this dude. And yeah. uh, his first show, the whole entire first hour, every segment on Raw featured Theory. Yeah. Yeah. Theory and versus the WWE roster. With segments with the Bloodline, segments with Drew McIntyre and Sheamus, segments with, with Dolph Ziggler, 
with Brock. Like, bro, come on, son. Mm-hmm. What, what, yeah. are, what are y'all expecting? <clears throat> I wouldn't I, be surprised. I might be even more mad tomorrow. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Theory starts getting that Seth Rollins treatment after he, like, broke up with the Shield yeah. and was rolling with the authority. It just it's going to be behind the scenes instead of being on screen thing. Because Triple H is high on him. I think a lot of people are high on Theory. Whether you are or not as a fan, that's that's on you. But they like Theory. So you're probably going to see more of that. So I agree with CC on that one. Uh, Vince took two of mine. So this will be my last one. Um, and I took one of Vince's. So the next one should be Vince's last one, if I if I did my math correct. Because he said no, I, I replaced one it. Listed. Vince took one of mine. So, so. Anyway, uh, I only made six and I'm not replacing any. I think. I don't think you need to replace one. I think we've we've done enough um, between the three of us, and we still have a whole sh- I got one more. slew of... No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying Vince doesn't need to add one that I took because we've got, like, shows to break down and shit. But Do we? Uh, this isn't the whole show, Vince. Um, it should be. Factions and managers being utilized way better than they have been lately. I mean... Everyone loved the Hurt Business, but the Hurt Business did not have the best run and it did not have a great ending. Nobody was happy about it. Whereas we have seen Triple H put respect on factions where even I, in my personal belief, seeing him start to turn around some of the existing factions or try and make them a little more important. We'll talk about it. Don't make that face. We'll get into it. Um, And just don't book nobody like he did Undisputed Era. That was too much. Yeah, I agree. But in hindsight, it was too much. It was fun at the time, but we know Vince was not a fan of tag teams or really factions. He just gave us factions because we wanted factions and he didn't really care about them. So I'm hoping to see a little respect and prestige put into being in a faction um, where factions are actually doing a little more than just kind of existing. And the majority of the members just taking L's while there's one top guy. So, yeah, sure. Uh, next one. Uh, I'm gonna say that Vince McMahon guys are slowly gonna be out the door. Uh, guys like Bruce Pritchard, I feel like are, I'm on the fence on whether or not they'd stick around, but Kevin Dunn's gone. No, no, it might not happen tonight, it might not happen tomorrow, it might not happen within a month, but I, I think guys like Kevin Dunn are gone. Uh, Triple H big, Triple H big dub Kevin Dunn earlier, so don't be shocked. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I can see like more Triple H guys like Jeremy Borash that like Triple H brought in from Impact getting more of a shine. Michael Cole having more input on things because mm-hmm. they work well together down in NXT. So you can be seeing more of that. It's like less of the Vince regime, it's like slowly being weeded out and replaced with more of the Triple H guys, which is to be expected. And uh, yeah, go ahead. Next one. If you uh, it, yeah, this is my last one. Uh, I'm going to just say nothing really fundamentally will change. Like, it'll be little bitty things you'll probably notice. Mm-hmm. But as far as like the foundation of everything, it'll probably remain the same because, I mean, why why fix things that aren't broken? If you're still making money and, and a lot of the things are working financially, you don't want to drastically switch that up. So it'd be little, little itty bitty things that, you know, we'll, we'll notice here and there. But it's not going to be this huge, you know, complete difference like everybody's expecting. Oh, for sure. Um, Matt, you say you didn't have any more, right? Well, I told you you didn't have any more also because I told you not to replace that one. So that was five for you. You should be done. <laughs> All right. Well, I we can move on because we technically already kind of talked about this one. But yeah. Well, so is uh, it about- one more thing. I'm sorry. I think business wise, there'll be a lot more like partnerships and everything too. I think that is the, the price yesterday's price is not today's price. It's like everything's gonna be more expensive. <laughs> the ticket is gonna be more expensive. They're gonna be working with a lot, you know, a lot more bigger name celebrities. Like I'm hearing something about Bobby Lashley and Tyson. It was probably oh, that'd be, gonna, that'd be dope. Yeah. Poppy at WrestleMania. Poppy at WrestleMania, yes. Oh. Uh, we can see guys like Gargano and Bray returning. Now, forget about just Sasha and Naomi. We can see like more Triple H guys come back. I thought to Johnny home. Gargano was always coming back. He just had to be a daddy. Yeah, yeah, daddy wrestling. All right, let's get into our review for the week. Uh, TC, we're gonna start with you. Spit or swallow? Uh, let's do swallows. Oh no, we're so we changed it up. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say spit or swallow, and then whatever you want to go with. If you want to go with a swallow, whatever's on your list, pick a swallow or a spit. Each time I'm going to come to you and you just get whatever is on your mind or whatever you want to talk about the most, whether it's a spit or a swallow, you bang it out. Let's go. Go ahead. First thing on the mind. Uh, Roman Reigns coming into work this week. Swallow that. <laughs> on Raw, specifically. Like you, you go to work on SmackDown, but Raw mm-hmm. specifically – Triple H said, hey, Roman, uh, you got to come to work on Monday. Uh, Roman had to get on a private jet off of the private island, hop into his private BMW on his private highway and drive to his private arena for Monday Night Raw. And to bounce off of that, I'm going to swallow the sick-ass pro- promo comeback that he had for Theory. It's like, no, daddy ain't here no more. Like that shit was fucking hilarious. They played off of that, and that's that that inspired the title of today's episode. Well, it's not just that because I mean, even in Heyman's promo when the mic wasn't working, he said the sound tech must be from New Jersey, and then he's like, "You're the next one out the door." Reference to Vince leaving Love and that. all that, and then like you said, Roman Warren's theory that his daddy's gone, and if he keeps messing up, Roman will be his daddy now, and then we got the "Who's Your Daddy" chance. Um, theory attacking the Usos with the proof case, clearly shitting his pants when he sees Bro. Roman coming in, and then uh, theory getting dropped by the Usos after Dolph cost him the tag match later on, and he tapped out to Bobby. So, everything theory, Usos, Roman, Paul, that whole thing big swallow. Whole, I'm swallowing that whole first hour actually, like, because yeah. like I got on my list everybody cooking theory. That entire hour, he got his ass cooked. The God, whole I wish we had the sovereign soundboard here. Oh yeah, man, he, he chilling. Uh, yeah. We'll see him tomorrow. But uh, everybody cooking this dude. That's I'm swallowing that. Like Jay Uso slapping him off the back of the head. Like that was comedy. I loved it. Vince, spit or swallow. Uh, I am going to swallow. Uh, give me one second. Got to look up my notes one second. Actually, you you go next because I, uh, I didn't have I'm swallowing the return of Rhea Ripley in an I'm your poppy t shirt. Yes. Shoving Ray's poppy daughter Rhea. in the face because Ray doesn't listen to Young King's wrestling and hasn't learned oh, shit. Oh. Can I go next? Can I go next? Uh, you I mean, I'm gonna talk about it, and then if you want to tag on to what I'm saying, oh, we'll yeah, all discuss it. what I'm tagging. Yeah, me. yeah. So hold on. Um I'm your poppy t-shirt, shoving Ali in the face. She comes in, she drags Dom into the hallway. Finn and Damien jump Ray. And then later, Rhea shows up after Finn and Damien make Dom, like, get away from his dad and just rocks Ray Mysterio out of nowhere. This is what I was talking about when I said fixing some issues that we've had with factions, because if we're being honest, the Finn, Damien, Rhea version of what I like to call the Sexecutioners, the... Uh, judgment day have not been great. Rhea was injured. Finn and Dom weren't really doing shit, but this kind of revitalized that group, in my opinion, a little bit. They feel like maybe we're going to build this team back up a little bit. We're going to get some shit out of them. We got TC. So, yeah, I'm, I'm swallowing Poppy Rhea as I segue into my first bit of the evening. 2020 Young Kings Wrestling Worst Father of the Year. Raymond Mysterio bringing his family to work again after what happened two years ago. You did not learn when we crowned you worst father of the year as Finn Balor for the last two or three weeks has been saying you are a bad father and you go ahead and prove him right and bring your family to work. You pull up in the Maybach and bring your family to work. It was his 20 year celebration though. Okay, y'all, y'all can Cena celebrate. Family, y'all in he's... New York City, go celebrate after work. Listen, Keep them at the hotel. Last time Ray showed up with his family, Aaliyah got pregnant. We haven't seen her since. She had to have that baby. Now she's back. Buddy, buddy got her knocked up. Oh, no, they, buddy, they took buddy lost his Rose job. Wade with that one, that was out of here. <laughs> Gene Snitsky, that baby. Oh my God, That's Dom funny. got his ass whooped. And then I Ray this man nine. bringing his family yeah. to work. I'm spitting it because. You keep, 
I don't I, listen. I don't really like being proven correctly when it's something negative about somebody. But here he goes, sure. proving me right sure. every single week. To add on to that, I am gonna spit the fact that when Dom got dried out and got beaten the fuck up, not only did not Ray help their guests, like you trying to tell me a bunch of people didn't jump the judgment day and like what the fuck y'all doing? His doing mama this? was there. You mean to tell me his mama <laughs> wouldn't go scrap for her first born? She a worse, she a bad life. mama too. Andrea and about the whole life. All, both parents are bad. I'm gonna I'm spit the fact that nobody helped out poor Dom. Listen, it's that a bad is family man. all around. They think because they just because it's Rey Mysterio and because they dress nice and in Louis Vuitton and Gucci, that we're supposed to be impressed by them when they just they, look at Dom. Dom don't know what he's gonna do. He's just quick to 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 respond under peer pressure. You know, you see how quick he decided to join Judgment Day two weeks ago. Quick. Well, he didn't even think about it. But since we're on the topic of everything, can I just <laughs> Well, I know, who are these people? I, I, I used to, I used to like, I used to like Ray Mysterio. He was in the No Limit Soldiers. I was going to say he was a No Limit Soldier, and he just let his boy get dragged like that. Didn't, didn't you nothing. use Ray Mysterio Bruh, consistently? He's not a No Limit WWE? Soldier for real. I thought I told you he ain't like that. Maybe he's not like that anymore. He got suburbanized. Apparently, he was just yeah, riding with Kidman and Conan. They were the real ones. I don't know, man. Kidman don't strike me as that. Listen. K dog, K dog, way, way, way more of a writer. Way yeah. more. Um, <laughs> but since we were just spending a bunch of right materials, I wanted to give this man his flowers. Twenty years in WWE, he is facts, man. In my mouth, I slander wrestling, wrestling characters, not the people that portray them. By the way, exactly. So, so shout out to the man. Uh, one okay of the, fate. Yeah. Yeah, outside of game. Let's let's give this man his flowers. Twenty years ain't no joke. Uh not 30, it was it. like 33 years overall. I think so because he started when he was 14. Like so I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna Google when the fuck this man I started. Say 89 or 90, and he's been at it since then. Sounds about right. But yeah, that, that man, that man's like in my mind rushmore. He's one of my favorites of all time. He actually Bro. representation matters, obviously. Like I said, Eddie Guerrero Remister to the biggest names for Latinos, Mexicans alike. So that alone, man, like 20 years going strong, and people still know when you think of mass wrestling in the states, you think of Ray Mysterio. He's the greatest yeah. luchador of all time because you can't name nobody better, of course. Yeah, everybody know who Ray Mysterio is. He was a no limit soldier. All the rappers know who he is. <laughs> now that you've had time to look at your notes, Vince, spit a swallow. Uh, well, that that was my first one was gonna be the Rey Mysterio like twenty years. Well, that can't be yours because that was mine. So move to your next one. <laughs> That's how this show works. Jeez. No, because I, I was sw- I was sw- I was swallowing twenty years of Rey Mysterio. Like, TC is- spit or swallow. Uh man, swallow Trick Williams paying homage to Ali and Sonny Liston standing over Wesley with the hell yeah, I love it. I love the Ali trivia. I love to see young fellas knowing, respecting their legends. I love it. You know, Trick uh, Trick was that whole thing that they get, like giving him a push now, letting him kind of be his own thing, not just standing behind Melo. I'm all for that. So uh, I'm that, with you on that. I mean, he's improving. I mean, he's ready to, to yeah, he's uh, moving up be the more rankings. than a henchman. Can I uh, go ahead and swallow the new <clears throat> heel Cora J look that we saw on Tuesday? Because, goddamn. Like heel core J. What's the difference? I, I cannot tell. Was she wear shorts? Like aesthetically, like she had like like rip up like shorts or whatever, like the ones that like you have like skin on the side. I don't know what the fuck they're called. I guess I don't pay attention because Cora J just I don't care. I never not cared. as thick That's sky blue. Aesthetic. You said wait, what? Wait. I said not as thick sky blue. Not even that. I just I don't see it. Like I think. I think it might have been before the the whole babyface thing. They were trying to be too much like Bailey, and it wasn't really doing it for me. Well, that's not really. That's the thing. I didn't care. That's the thing that never really felt like her. She kind of like had like more of a page aesthetic when she was in the indies. She was more of a page, like but with like consistent kudos in my book for talking shit on Darby Allen that one time. Hell yeah, that dude at all. Hell yeah. Uh, I think she's slowly growing into this heel character. I'm liking it. I think there's way more 
upside into Cora Jade as, mm-hmm. as a heel, as opposed to like the babyface surfer skater girl gimmick she had going on. Ever uh, she just she just needs to get yeah, there. You go. She just needs to switch up that theme song. She needs to change something up. But that's my first wallet for it. Since well, we're, I mean, yeah. I didn't necessarily have the aesthetic, but I, I'm with you on that. Like Cora attacking Zoe and then Roxanne running her off after the match. Gigi versus Zoe. And then the whole, you know, uh, Zo- Zoe Cora toxic attraction opening of NXT and the fact that we found out we're going to get Saray versus Mandy and that like everything toxic attraction, Zoe and Cora that happened throughout NXT is a big swallow for me. Gigi so Dolan. I'm right there with you. Yeah. And a Gigi Dolan singles match all day, every day. Yes. Plus Las Vegas is owned Zoe Stark in that position. Yeah. Right from a return. Yeah. I'm glad you. I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of my spits. Actually, uh, I, I didn't like Gigi Dolan being put away so easily. Oh, um, okay, all right. I was that was my say. only thing I didn't like about it. I mean, of course, Zoe Stark should have won. Like, shout out Zoe. Glad she's back. Came back fast as hell too. By the way, seven months, something like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I just thought it was too quick of a match. Like, you could have put the the other one in Toxic Attraction that I don't think nobody cares about. JC spot, yeah. JC Jane definitely could have put her there because Gigi Dolan's upside. Or you know what? Even if you had put <laughs> Dolan, like like TC was saying, just give it a little bit more time. Have her get some more offense in because yeah, I it feel like been a commercial break in between here. Yeah, exactly. Because I feel like Gigi Dolan, like like Gigi Dolan is going to be one of the mainstays in that NXT Women's Division. Before you know it, she's going to be one of the bigger uh, names. It's still early. Yeah. I mean, she's still in the tag team. She's still coming out. So oh no, no, I'm not saying like some time. Her partner is the next year or two. Yeah. Yes, I think once she breaks out and has like a feud with Mandy Rose and like breaks away from toxic attraction, I think that's when you're gonna really see her shine. But you know that's coming. Soon. That's the Shawn Michaels special. Ah, oh, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes, of course. Uh, my next swallow is uh, someone I already kind of talked about, Alexa Bliss on Raw. There was something about Alexa Bliss on Monday that I, she felt like she was really feeling herself with the entrance, the backstage promo, putting Becky and B, or Becky and Bianca on notice after their win, and then. That whole match with Dewdrop, I mean, for a random, just no reason, really, Dewdrop versus Alexa Bliss match, like, they they went. And Alexa kind of reminded us, yeah, you know, like, I am a lot of character work and a lot of talking and all that, but I can go in the ring. Yeah, uh, She was really on her shit on Monday, so. That took place during Better Call of Soul. <laughs> I have not seen it yet. <laughs> Better Call of Saul or... The Alexa Bliss match. The Alexa Bliss match took place during Better Call Saul, so I haven't seen the Alexa Bliss match yet. Okay, makes sense. And I think it's better. Episode? Hey, no, no, no. I have not watched it. We are not going to discuss Better Call Saul. I will not see it till it comes out on Netflix. We are not doing that here. No spoilers on my show for the show you guys had me watch, and now I got to wait for the next season to come out on Netflix to finish. What if mm-hmm. I just give you my no, TV? No, so you can watch it. Spoiler free it's- review. This episode was a dedication to me as a Nebraska football fan. I loved it. <laughs> oh, fuck. I love it. I got to catch the every. I have not watched anything season six because it's not on Netflix. So I need to watch the whole thing. Oh, Chef's Kiss. Man, uh, VPN, man. VPN. There you go. Uh, TC, spit or swallow? Uh, <clears throat> spit, uh, Mr. Ginormous Dome McDonald's headbutting people. Cause that should be illegal, big head ass boy. You can't headbutt nobody. That is that is a weapon of mass destruction, sir. And Mr. Braun Breaker, like a he's made out of steel or he got vibranium chin or something. Cause he vibranium ate that. Chin. Oh hell no! You gotta have no. a vibranium chin to eat that big head ass. I'm spitting that like whole. Hammerhead out there. Oh, spit that whole segment, though. This shit was yeah, garbage. That whole segment yeah. is getting a spit. Like, him introducing himself creepily to the crowd and, like, giving backhanded compliments to everyone. The shit with Vic Joseph was just weird. Yeah, I no. Thought it was, he, I thought his hand was going to linger on Vic Joseph's lap or something. Was this is not Vince McMahon chance. Austin theory. That's not what's going on here. We don't know what J.D. McDonough is into. What's going on in that big old head of his? As as Katie says, Funko pop head looking ass. <laughs> there you go. Oh um, um, man, Vince, okay. spit or swallow. Uh, I think my biggest swallow of the week, uh, other than the one I'm saving because I know you're going to mention it at some point, 
Uh, Maybe t- McDonald's head is shaped like this bowl. <laughs> if you're not watching the YouTube version, you should. Uh, or the Pornhub. Or the Pornhub. The Alundra Blaze cameo and the announcement of the tag team for the four way match. Uh, I love that they emphasized that everyone was shitting on Cora Jade for doing that. And everyone last week was talking about, like, oh, that's so disrespectful. Oh, like they really aren't going to do anything with the women's tag team division. Like NXT and main roster tag team, women's tag team wrestling is dead. It's not going to be a thing anymore. Uh, But them actually focusing on it, giving us the four names just kind of solidifies all that for me. So that's the biggest swallow of the week is women's tag team wrestling returning to NXT. And we're going to crown yeah. brand new champions next week. And perfect Better fucking person. Caden and Katana. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, my next uh, spit, AJ giving Logan Paul respect backstage and Logan in general, and also teaming with Dolph that all Logan Paul and anyone in that locker room, being like, yeah, no, you got to be a baby face. So we like you. You're cool. We're glad you're here. Fuck all that. I'm not about it. Fuck Logan Paul. I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm spitting baby face Logan Paul. Look, if you're going to bring in Logan Paul, fine. But he's a heel. No one likes this motherfucker. Why are you trying to make it a thing? If anything, I think I have more respect for The Miz as a baby face. Not only does his wife have to come in and justify the size of his balls. And she's struggling to say the word test. test I'm struggling. Jesus. Test- Testicles. Dicular testicles testicular genitalia all, all these words she struggled just to defend her man that's the kind of energy i want in a relationship that's the that's the queen that miss got with maurice so fuck looking paul but i am swallowing maurice being there and also carrying around giant balls for a purse giant sparkly balls purse that was almost a thumbnail that was almost a thumbnail and then laying down ball measuring statistics to support the fact that her man does not have tiny balls. Like she knows more about the average size of male balls than I do. But she thinks she should considering those are her man's balls. She should know all about them. You got to care about your partner, you know, your significant other. Got to know their bodies, their ins and outs, you know. Hey, Melissa. <laughs> can't hear you. She can't hear you. I was just hoping you'd say that and she'd be like, is Matt calling me? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> unfortunately not. You're coming into the headset. No, so I'm not going to spit Logan Paul because I, I don't really care about him being around. I mean, just whatever. Uh, I don't have to pay attention to the segment season. I do think he should be a heel because you hear that heat that he got earlier mm-hmm. this year. Come yeah. on now. Uh, but the name Impulsive for a TV show is just a terrible name. Nobody put any thought into that name whatsoever. That's his actual podcast name. Is it? That's yeah, trash. it's called Impulsive Podcast or whatever. It's bad. Terrible. You should change the name of that. This that's that might be worse than Renee calling her shit oral sessions. I think she changed that up. She did. Understandably. Did you, did, did did you see that tweet of her? I was like, I wonder if I can get an interview with him and then someone replying because it was in the group chat. It's like I think oral sessions would got him into this predicament in the first place. <laughs> So shout out to that person that tweeted that. That's that's pure gold right there. That's comedy right there. Really witty. I enjoy it. Uh, TC spit a swallow. Uh, spit Zion mid. Keep this motherfucker off my television, please. Thank you. Thank you. He serves. I don't know what purpose at all. Let him go. Uh, Katie on. No, I mean like... don't don't let him go. Just figure something else out with him. He's not whatever y'all got him doing ain't hidden. It was hidden, and then they took him off TV for a while, and then they re- started doing whatever the fuck they're doing now, and now it's not hitting. Because he was his matches weren't hitting. He was hitting, but his matches weren't. They, yeah, they but why turned, they turned him? Why change what reason. was working? I don't know. Something about like Electra when he was Lopez doing the just face electrified stuff, him like, in the wrong direction. Yeah, like that shit was. I mean, it was whatever, but yeah, it's not hitting, bro. Nah, uh-uh. especially with Apollo, like. Apollo barely hidden too. I ain't gonna mm. lie. Yeah, I, I was no feeling type. Apollo when fucking Punisher is somebody. Get his ass out of here. See, I was feeling all that stuff with Apollo, but now that they're doing whatever the fuck they're doing with him and Zion, like this is not where I wanted to see Apollo when he came back no. down. Like when you came down and you got in Braun Breaker's face, and then like all of that, and right. even like you could just kind of tell the confidence that he kind of got being down there in NXT. 
and everything like i was feeling all of that and then you put him in a feud with zion quinn and it's like okay then that's where you lost me i thought he was gonna be doing some shit with some of the top stars like carmelo like braun like you know those guys solo stuff like that program with giovanni yeah great segue am i next for spitter swallows yes you are i'm spitter swallow i'm swallowing giovanni vinci this is the only italian man in nxt that i stand Mm. i love it he is fantastic. The match against Andre Chase at uh, Chase University, fantastic. Swallowing all that confuzzleness. Andre, Andre Chase. You know what? Giovanni Vinci is so great at taking those selfies during his entrance. He should apply to be the head like wrestler, the top lead wrestler of maximum male models because that man is perfect. He should be a maximum male model. He already has a perfect model name, Giovanni Vinci. That rolls off the tongue. That's that's almost like money to me. That's money. You pair him up, he'd be the single star. You got the manager, you got the tag team. That's a fashion of the future right there. Giovanni Vinci is your star. Tony I had no B. idea his English was that good either. Oh, fantastic. He never fantastic. talked with Imperium, so like, I had no idea. That's- he talked before Imperium when he was in the cruiser. Not like this. Shit. Not but like not, this. not like this. Not with this gusto. Um, it's a whole thing. So I got to spit and a swallow, but it's the same segment. I'm spitting the fact that the Street Profits are kicking it with Riddle again. But of course, biggest swallow of the week, something that I may or may not have manifested, may or may not be kayfabe, because I've seen reports that he's not really hurt. It's kayfabe. But uh, Riddle not only losing his match, but then after losing my hero, Seth Rollins, <laughs> Just wrecking his shit. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out my TikTok at Smacking It Raw. There's a nice little video dedicated to my hero stomping the shit out of Matt Riddle and getting him (laughs) off my SummerSlam card, baby. I honestly, I'm spitting the fact that that wasn't your first swallow from the get go. I have an order. That's how I do my shit is in an order. You it was the last thing that happened first, on man. Raw. That is my last thing on Raw. You do not dictate on my show how I do my spits and swallows. Man, you've been waiting for this moment so long. I thought you'd like break the mold and just like say fuck Riddle. It's part I'm of our just, intro I'm about video to break now. the mold and say fuck Vince. Okay. That's why I'm I'm that would be a new regime in WWE. Staying in the mold. Uh, TC, spit or swallow. Uh, I'm going to go over to SmackDown and uh, we're going to swallow the fact that there were multiple concurrent women's segments that all flowed together and all had something to do with each other. Uh, Probably the most obvious Triple H thing uh, that I've seen on SmackDown this week. I got another more obvious Triple H thing I'll talk about here in a second. Uh, But man, I don't even remember how it flowed like there was a shot scene in Aaliyah, and then we go backstage with Rhonda and Liv doing promo shots for their match. Natty comes over talking shit. Sonya comes over talking shit. Rhonda gets mad, goes out there, attacks uh, uh, Shotzi, and then it goes into a tag match. It, like they all, it all flowed together. And like, when's the last time we've seen that with the women on the main roster? It's been a while. It's been a very long time. So like, more of that. And I expect to see more of that now that Triple H is running the show. I agree. Mostly with the fact that Shotzi was on our TV and Paid we got play. that finish, uh, the Never Wake Up, which was that I nice cross leg. that segment too, by the way. I'm swallowing everything Shotzi. I am spitting the fact that Ronda came out and attacked yeah, Shotzi. That's that's, well, which that's Shotzi that's did nothing to Ronda Rousey. There was... No reason for her to attack poor Shotzi. Unless she's a big Aaliyah fan, which I don't see why. I'm spitting Rhonda grabbing a microphone. <laughs> that's that's a thing every week. That's that was really I, week. out of all those women's segments that rode together, Rhonda's promo is the one part that I didn't want to see. Because I yeah. got happy because like Shotzi was about to cut a promo. And if you know me, I don't want to hear Shotzi talk at all either. And when Rhonda's music cut her off, I was like, all right, cool. Rhonda about to come out there and just whoop her ass. No, Rhonda had to go grab a microphone and just ruin my night. 
I need my tank back. I need my helmet back. I need my Shotzi back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you on that. But uh, you know, shout out to Shotzi. She beat up Aaliyah. I'm all with it. Any uh, any negative things going for Aaliyah in her life? I'm all about. Dang. Why are you still hating on her? I thought you were good now that she wasn't on Black and Gold fucking up your show anymore. I thought you didn't even thought you were actually starting to kind of like her. I was starting to turn around to her, but you know, it's still fuck Aaliyah. It's 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 how uh, it's it's how Rick feels about Natty. Uh, it's just it's a it's a built in hatred. Does she give I, you a does she give you a hate boner? Because Natty gives Reek one. We talked about that on Young Kings. I don't know if it's at that extent. YKWrestling.com. Go check it out. <laughs> cheap plug. Cheap plug. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, anything Natty for Ilya, I'm, I'm all for it. So yeah, I, I'm a group with y'all there. Then spit or swallow. <sighs> Even though I haven't seen the segment, I am going to swallow the Maximum Male Models SummerSlam Collection. I have yet to see it. I'm already pre-swallowing it because I know it's gonna titillate the juices of my guilty pleasures. So yeah, that's a, that's my swallow. That's my next swallow. This was the best one so far, but the only thing I'm actually swallowing from it was the fact that man Swa lifted up his shirt and he had pasties on underneath. That popped me. <laughs> okay, all right. Both of them are really doing this shit. I love it. They, like, they're leaning into it, which bro. Is- Go 155% every time. That's how you're supposed to do it. Because, uh, yeah, dude, I love that shit. No, because, like, honestly, when they repackaged and renamed, like, LA9 to Max Dupree and this male model st- stuff, I was like, I was against it. But when he de- actually debuted his maximum male models in Mont- Mont- uh, Marseille and Montsois, and I saw how much they leaned into it. When you see the wrestlers leaning into this shit, like it's gonna I'm work to despite the it. Have fun, man. Yeah, you can see you can t- like this is this is what like uh, this is what the Omadin or Masse or whatever he's what he's been waiting for. He's been waiting man, for something waiting to for like six. To, he's been waiting for a break, man. Like this is better and, than and he's was- he's leaning into it way more than Mansoor is too. Like he is he is going hard with this because one this is like bro this is my third time getting on tv i'm yeah. not getting off of tv <laughs> again yeah. and i'm gonna make sure of it dude I- i'm with it i'm all about it i think it's perfect and i think Dedication. if you add giovanni vinci to it oh my god it's an a plus plus faction a plus plus faction but yeah i'm still in, uh maximum male models because anytime they're on my screen my choices are titillated now I know TC is a fan of this guy, but uh, my my next one, uh, spitting Grayson spit Waller. Me? No, oh. Grayson Waller, his gimmick and the fact that he won a match. It is not working for me. It has not, not worked a fan for of me. Grayson Waller. I, I just don't hate him like my co-host does. But it's not working for me. Nah, it has not it. worked for me. He ain't hitting. Is, yeah. is I I tweeted that out too during NXT. I was like, when he was on Raw, like he's falling off so much from. That stuff he was doing with AJ Styles back whenever that was. I don't remember. But, yeah, whatever he's been doing since then, the shit with Senga didn't hit. The only thing that he's ever done that even remotely hit was AJ, and that's because AJ made him feel like a bigger deal than he actually was. A lot of wrestlers do that. Mm -hmm. Seth Rollins and Dominic, for example. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. But I'd rather see Dominic than see Grayson Waller. I'd rather see Dominic finally turn on fucking Ray, but we already talked ain't about gonna, that. Ain't uh, going to happen. If it happens, it'll be at SummerSlam. Needs to. Uh, TC, spit a swallow. Uh, what we got here, man? Swallow Baron Corbin buying a ticket to antagonize his ops. That is one of my favorite wrestling tropes of all time. I love when a wrestler buy a ticket and then they wait, especially when they're heels too. Like, like when when like JBL and Eric Bischoff and all them walked into Hammerstein Ballroom at one night stand and they all just waving their tickets around like, yeah, motherfuckers, we paid to, we paid to be here and get these nice balcony seats. And then they got their ass beat. Like my only, I'm going to swallow this segment though, Mm -hmm. because as, as with Ray Mysterio, I was proven right again. And here Adam Pierce proved me right. Like he always seems to do, 
because he allowed a paying fan to attack one of his commentators. Mm -hmm. He allowed it. Like he literally did nothing about it to prevent it at all. Like he, he was doing this weak ass pull apart. Like, bro, you're a former NWA champion. Like pull this up, pull him apart like a man, but he's a fucking, he's terrible. But no, um, Corbin buying the ticket. I love that. I, I love um, I love that trope every, like every single time. Just because I didn't watch SmackDown this week and haven't really been paying attention to the storyline. Uh, Sanjay Dutt, too. He wasn't about to do shit either. My so question hard. is, why did Bear Corbin need to buy a ticket when he's, that he's on the SmackDown roster? He wasn't working. He was off. He was supposed to be in Nashville. People that don't work. He wasn't on scheduled. Fridays, like I, I work schedule listen, show up. Vince, check this out. I work at an arena, right? Here in Las Vegas. I work at an arena. If I'm not scheduled to work an event, I gotta buy a ticket to be in the building. That's I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make this work for you, Vince. He bought a ticket behind commentary so that he had a reason to sit in the crowd and heckle the shit out of Michael Cole. And Pat McAfee okay. while they were trying to do their job. Okay, this makes more sense. Because as a wrestler, if he had just come down, he would not be sitting in the crowd. They could come out, remove him, but he had a ticket for that seat and then was throwing popcorn and doing all sorts of shit. And then on top of that, as TC said, this man climbs over the barricade and punts the punter <laughs> in his balls. Just drop McAfee, mm -hmm. punts the punter. Okay, all right, I can dig it now. That makes more sense now. I'll go back and watch him probably swallow that as well. Oh, uh, do you have any more spits or swallows, Vince? Uh, I do, I do. Okay, what do you got? Spit okay, uh, I'm I'm saving my last spit, but uh, I'm swallowing uh, Rush Rush versus John Moxie uh, for the opener for uh, AEW Fight for the Fallen. Uh, I like the match. I I love Rush. I obviously I'm I'm a fellow Mexican, so I support all my fellow Mexicans and Latinos on TV, especially when they're in the main world title program or match. God knows Pence it should be, but I'm glad Roosh is there. Um, I liked it. I thought it was good. Uh, shout out to Roosh for uh, getting kinky with it and uh, licking uh, Moxie's blood blood off his hands. So you know, shout out to Roosh. Shout out to Mox. That was that match no. slap. No, that's the only thing I watched from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm talking to Vince before the show, and Vince is like, "So I started watching Dynamite, and I got as far as Roosh licking the blood." I'm like, "You, you didn't, even, you didn't start watching Dynamite. Like, you, you didn't even finish the first match. That doesn't even count as starting." I finished the match. I finished the match. Does not even count. But uh, no, I'm spitting that. I, I don't understand. A, you bring in Mulan Rouge, and don't explain to me who the fuck he is. And listen, AEW, this is something you need to understand, and this is something that all AEW fans need to understand. It is not my job as somebody watching the product to go out and do my research on the wrestlers that you are presenting to me on TV to know who they are, to be excited about seeing them wrestle. That's not my job. My job is to tune in and watch. The company's job is to tell me who the fuck Moulin Rouge is, why I should give a fuck about him, and why he's in a title match. You know, he's not because he's new brand Japan new. Guy, right? It's his it's his first. It doesn't matter if he's New Japan, if he's from the fucking WCW power plant, if he's from WWE, if he's from GCW, if Tony Khan was buying Coke from him and said, hey, you look like a wrestler. Like, it doesn't matter where the fuck they found this guy. The point is, it is their job to make me care about him and understand why he gets a title match. And they did not do that. They put some dude that I don't fucking know in a title match. And they're going to be like, well, you should know who he is because he wrestled here and he wrestled there. I'm not here to do fucking research. Wrestling is not my fucking homework. I watch AEW. AEW needs to present him in a way that I give a fuck about his title match. And just cool. because some random dude is wrestling John Moxley does not make me give a fuck about it. I'm not disputing your case. You're 100% correct. But I, I'm just like, why you like disrespecting the man's name? <laughs> He's not a New Japan Because guy. that's, that's what I do. It's but with New I Japan, don't know who the fuck he is. He's Mulan Rouge. You don't do that with anybody else other than New Japan people. That's not true. Yeah, Name you know, I think it's a lot of them trying to be anti Brooks and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn. 
I give a lot of wrestlers nicknames. I purposely mispronounce New Japan wrestlers names, but I've given a lot of wrestlers and characters in both NXT and AEW nicknames. Okay, so then it's perfectly okay with me calling calling Cesaro Claudio Mastacholi then. No, because you know who the fuck Cesaro is. I have no idea who Mulan Rouge is. Okay, well, I can't pronounce his last name, so I'm calling him Mastacholi. And it's funny. You can make money off of that. You you make like a parody Chef Boyardee shirt and like you you, you put like Claudio's Mustacholi. Like that's money right there. That's money. Someone write this shit down. Get Claudio uh, some free merch. No, but let me bounce off of that though, man. Like, yeah, go ahead. It, it's a lot of them trying to do that, <clears throat> excuse me, do that thing where they're anti WWE, like do it a complete opposite of something WWE does. Cause probably one of, at least for me, if I didn't watch on the weekly basis, I can go watch a PLE and know everything that happened in the last month. Cause they yeah. do these video packages before every single match. And they show the video packages like two or three times a night. So like, you're going to know what happened and you really, all you need to watch this video package. Honestly, you don't got to watch three hours of raw every week to know what goes on. And I will continue to add to that point because there has been a stretch where I have not been paying attention to certain feuds or matches, even going into WrestleMania and other big pay-per-views where I'm like, I don't even know the story. You just see the video package before. And I'm like, Oh, I know exactly why they're having this match. And AEW doesn't do that. AEW, yeah. like their last show, just their last show. What, what was it like double or nothing? Or what was it? Yeah. Right. Double or nothing was their last yeah. show. Yeah. And even before that, I was like forbidden door when they did that. They just had match, 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 match. Why the fuck are we having this match? I don't know why they're having this match. I'm not watching every single week. There's like, who knows how many hours of wrestling. I can't watch all of it, even though I do a podcast covering it. No, you know? and another thing, people are like, we just saw this. Why are they replaying what happened earlier in the night? Because there are people out there like myself who turn Raw off for an hour every week to go watch Better Call Saul. And then I can go back on roll and they recap what happened. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I don't really need to rewind it at this point. Yeah. Cause I get it. I, all right. I, I see. Okay. Damn. I, I miss, I miss Bianca in that last hour. I let me rewind this back. Yeah. There's, there's that. There's that. One of those That's things. They, WWE, WWE things does that do for a reason. Other people should do. Yeah. Um, Who's next? I am. I'm going to go back to NXT. So I am preemptively spitting the beauty queen gimmick for Santino Morella's daughter, Ariana Grace. I, I don't want, like they do this whole thing with Tiffany Stratton. Now they're doing this with her toxic attraction. It's all we're girls and we're pretty. And that's our gimmick. And while it's okay for one or two, I don't want it to be a reoccurring theme for all of these women where everything has to do with their looks as these new characters come up, like having her be a beauty queen, it wasn't working for me, though I am swallowing Ariana Grace versus, on my TV period. This is on Indy Hartwell? Yes. The match. Her, yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you on that. So. TC, spit or swallow. You got anything left? Uh, I got I got a lot, man. Like, I, I don't know why. I was just taking notes. Um, <laughs> going to swallow uh an exposing of Nikita lines. Just I don't have to say any more about that. Yeah, I love that the librarian was out here just spitting facts. Like probably Wikipedia facts, but facts nonetheless. <laughs> um I, I was with that. I was just about to bring that up. I'm like, well, how do you feel about that, man? The librarian just like being like exposing Nikita Lyons. She is not a librarian. She is a stripper secretary. We have had this discussion. She's paralegal. Paralegal. She's paralegal. Um, it is what it is. Like Nikita Lyons is not the best in the ring, or at least they're not letting her do what maybe she could do. I still like watching her come out. I still like watching her do what she does. Uh, I enjoy the aesthetic of Nikita Lyons. The character is... Not so much. I, I did enjoy when she was going against Last Legend. I don't know about putting her in that top spot. I'm kind of glad that we moved away from that and went to uh, Zoe yep. Stark. So Zoe Stark is a good placeholder. 
Yeah. It's just racist. And I know I'm getting off topic here, but like while I was watching NXT this week, uh, it just kind of dawned on me. I don't think it'll be st- so he starts to take that title off of Mandy. Who the fuck is going to take that title off of Mandy? Because she's approaching like longest reigning NXT Women's Champion territory. And I'm not hating on Mandy, but I don't want her to have the number one ring. She can be number two, but I don't want to have I don't want her to have the top spot. I don't know. Is that Haiti? I don't know. I'm I'm super proud of Mandy for everything that she has done and the way she Me has too. made this character and really kind of shown us what she has to offer that we didn't get to see on the main roster, that they didn't really highlight, and the work that she has put in to be the champion that she's been. So um Vince Andy Rose Swallow? the last three oh. years just has been putting in crazy work. Yeah, mm-hmm. she has. And like I was saying, I'm not trying to discredit her or anything. I'm like, A, I'm trying to figure out who the fuck is gonna get that title off of her. And B, I'm like, again, I'm not trying to hate her or anything, but I don't want her to have the longest training women's title reign. I don't know why. Uh, swallow, Vince. Probably the biggest bit of the whole fucking week. I'm going to call them by their government names because I do not want to talk to them or refer to them by their given gimmick names. Raul Mendoza and Michael Paris giving Mm. up their luchador ways, being spineless, not loyal, and untrustworthy. They just, they're just, that's a DJ, uh, uh, that's a Quanky Wild. That's his real name, Michael Paris. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so I, I went and looked. His name like Cruz or some shit now. No, Cruz is Raul Mendoza. Oh, Joaquin Wild still is being called Joaquin Wild. Uh, Raul Mendoza got changed to Cruz del Toro, yes. or something like that. Stupid, but it's a disgrace to Lucha. They're a disgrace to Lucha Libre. They gave up their Lucha Libre gear. They looked like less like Lucha Libre style. They went out there in like black tank tops and just like they folded. Like an origami pigeon. Like, I hate that they folded so much into this. Whereas the loyalty to Santos Escobar, like, they took out your former leader. Out. They took out your former leader. Who's that, got... Vince? What do you mean? What do you mean, they? Who's they? You keep saying they. Who is this they that you speak of? What? Tony D'Angelo and Two Stacks. Deuce and Domino, whatever their names are, I can't remember the two guys. But yeah, like, like Santos got taken out and stuff. And you know what? I'm just like, if I'm Tony D, I'm not, and, and I'm, I would never want to put myself in the Tony D spot because I do not care for Tony D. Uh, and you- there you go. Uh, I'm swallowing <laughs> all of this because they lost the match. The stipulation of the match was that they fall the fucking line. And they are finally doing it and contributing nah, nah, to nah, the family. Nah, and thank nah, God they nah. are contributing to the family because nah, God. <laughs> God damn it. I don't. I, uh... Thank God they are finally contributing to the family and doing what they were meant to do. And my boy, Tony and the family, which now includes those two people you spoke of got the Disgrace. win, which Disgrace. is something that they weren't doing under the leadership of Santos, who is laid up in the hospital, broken as fuck. I'm gonna say Getting this. the win. I'm gonna say this: if their loyalty can be so swayed so easily by a mass stipulation, how easily will they turn on Tony D'Angelo? It's chess, man. They won't because Tony's a real boss. <laughs> of of what? The D'Angelo family, which they are a part of. Okay. Cool story, bro. Um, hey man, I'm just saying, bro. Your job tell you to sell them lottery tickets. You do it. Nah, they look at me some type of way. It's your job. No, 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 no. I'm gonna tell man, you this not right. like doing it, but it's no, no, no. Not. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this right now. If a customer comes in acting disrespectful, us, disrespectful us all, fuck, I'm like, go get your lottery tickets at the Seven Eleven across the street. I ain't about to give you shit. That ain't the customer it. though. We talk about talk about your superiors. Your superiors want you to do something because it's your job. You are gonna do? You it. went you in there. Like no, nah, I'll, I'll walk. Got out. hired. You do exactly. What you're out. not gonna. I walk out. You gonna I'll walk, walk out. out every little thing you don't like doing? At the, at Hell yeah. You like you like everything you do at work. Come on, you think it's too hard? I know that's not true. 
not everybody likes every single thing they do. No. Work. Here, no. Better question, Vince. Better question. Let's say the Italian mafia buys your store. The man that hired you, they beat up and put in the hospital. You are going to go to that then Italian mafia and tell them, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm not working and get your ass beat and put in the hospital. Or are you going to continue doing what the Italian mafia asked you to do in the position that you are in? I ain't no bitch. That's all okay. I say. I ain't you no. Ain't going to be I'm no a- bitch laying up in a hospital bed next to that manager. <laughs> I'm a ride or die. He lucky he only put him in a hospital. They killed his. He killed his friend. Yeah, he killed his boy. Sleeping with the fishes now over in AEW Dark. Bobby Fishes. No, he no, ain't fishes. Bob- I mean, technically, he is sleeping with Bobby Fishes now because he's over in AEW. Yeah. Um. I'm spitting. So they came out a couple weeks ago and said the dark order isn't going anywhere. We were honoring Brody Lee, even though Colt Cabana left or I haven't seen him. Don't know where the fuck he is. He wasn't out there. Anna J was out there. And then all of the sudden Anna J is now a heel and has joined Jericho. the Jag offs, as I like to call them, uh, the Jericho appreciation group of fine fellows. Um, that shit is trash, bro. It Stop makes no that, sense. Chris. Like, you literally just brought her out and said, Dark Order is going nowhere, and now all of a sudden she's a jag off. Like, I, I don't get it. I, I'm spitting that whole thing. I'm going to just spit up Chris Jericho's existence, and period. That's a bro, consistent all right, not, not All right, I'm, I'm not a lot of people talk about this. Chris Jericho's wife was at the January 6th Capitol riots. Oh, we've talked about it. I was saying not a lot of people talk about this though, and I'm just gonna say I, I like the every time I get to bring this up, I'll bring it up. She was there, mm-hmm. and if Dynamite wasn't on that Wednesday, Jericho probably would have been there too. And Jericho's group looks a lot like a bunch of the people she might go riot with, it's, it's... especially Hager. She's mm-hmm. number one guy. Uh, TC spit or swallow. Yeah, man, what we got here? We got a couple more swallows in one spit. Uh, Swallow Drew versus Sheamus in the Irish Donningbrook Shalele match on SmackDown. Aside from the Drew McIntyre kicking out of everything, which I kind of got tired of after like the second time. Did it like three more times uh, because he was getting his ass cooked. He was getting his ass cooked. And he still won. He beat Sheamus after one bro kick. Sheamus, not no, who who's, who has a bro kick? Who has a claymore? I can't. Sheamus has the bro kick. Sheamus yeah. bro kicked this man like twice. Like Butch came in, like Ridge Holland came. They was cooking this man. He was kicking out of everything. Hit one claymore, it was over with. But the match so, itself was. was did we see Gunther at all? Nah, Gunther wasn't no. on the show. Gunther. He wasn't on Raw or SmackDown. I, I'm with Black. you. 30 minutes of them beating the shit out of each other. Uh, fun as shit. Sheamus and Drew always have a good match. Some of the aesthetics for the Donnybrook, like the upside down Irish flag that they had hanging the wrong way, was, bothered oh me a little God. bit. Yeah. Uh, they messed that up. And also, we knew Drew was going to win, which kind of take like they didn't do a good enough job of making us think, hey, Seamus might walk out of this. Yeah. What they should have done is they should have made it so that if Seamus won, he'd be added to the match because that's more realistic than him replacing Drew. Yeah. I I love that. I might believe Barrows, though, man. Give me some Mario Kart vibes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This man said Mario Kart. Vince, you Uh, got any more spits or swallows? uh, No, I think that's my last one. Well, then me and TC will just keep going back and forth. Uh, yeah, go ahead, spitball it between. The two I'm years. swallowing Mox's promo on Dynamite. <laughs> which... don't, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> Listen, we got TC finally out here actually saying spit or swallow. Do not, do not push it. Do not push it. I'm pushing. Um, yeah, people would infant take a mile. <laughs> Mox's promo. I, I have not been a big fan of John Moxley in AEW. I, I don't really see much of a difference between Dean Ambrose and John Moxley. However, the promo he cut on dynamite, even though he's interim champion, it made the title feel more important than it has for me in 
a while. And uh, the fact that even though he's going up against Chris Jericho, calling Chris Jericho out and saying, basically everything that you have done in AEW has been bullshit. If you want to come for me, I want the fucking lion heart. That's who I want. Bring him or don't come at all. And I was feeling that promo. So I'm swallowing John Moxley's promo. I'll take that Jericho that, you know, who's, who Dean Ambrose has broke his plant. Like, I'll take that Jericho <laughs> or whatever the fuck. Justice. Oh, uh, what the fuck was that plant's name? Mitch. Mitch, Mitch, justice for Mitch. Justice for Mitch. He should come out with like Mitch's like like the sentence or something. Like have it with like another plant and say that this is Mitch's like great grandchild or something. That's what I want to see. Well, I believe the whole Mitch thing is one of those things that he hated about his career so much in WWE that we're never hear again. He could he could he, he could have he sold merch. They could have sold Chia Pet like Mitch plants. They could like you saw I mean, how lead into that sports entertainer shit and just bring the fucking plan out. When when WWE had those Jericho things, should I, absolutely when they had those slam crates, they actually had a little mini Mitch plant, and I never was able to get that slam crate, and I was so jealous because I didn't have a little Mitch. Mm. Also, to go along with this on uh, Rampage. Wheeler Yuta came out to cut a promo with, uh, as Vince calls him, Claudio Mustacholi, uh, as the we Ring of Honor Pure Champion. Together. Uh, Claudio. Oh, that sounds terrible. Well, actually, it really wasn't. So Claudio said a couple things. He did not cut a long promo. He was fine. Yuta came out, and basically Jericho cut Yuta off and was just like, this is bullshit, blah, 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 because Yuta beat his boy Daniel Garcia. And then he just kept asking the crowd, can I beat Chris Jericho? And then Chris Jericho's like, you can't beat me. I can beat Chris. And they went back and forth. So now it'll be Wheeler Yuta versus Chris Jericho. And if Yuta wins, Yuta gets the match against Mox instead of Chris Jericho, which probably won't happen. But we'll see. Never we'll underestimate see. cocaine in my head. <laughs> That's true. Um, I'm going to swallow. Or no, I did swallow. So TC, spit or swallow. Uh. More, more of theory getting cooked on SmackDown, so I'm gonna swallow that because you know it's a classic villain origin story that we got going on. This dude has been getting bullied by everybody, and you know he's gonna go get the strap at some point. He got that briefcase; he can do. He he's low key the most powerful guy on the roster right now. Yeah, good sir. Fucking cat won't leave me alone. She keeps Damn. she just bit my foot. She's been down there. I've been trying to swat her away. And just go on with the show. She's What's rubbing all over my feet and dropping. And she, it's my it's my wife's cat. What's your wife? What's Kate's cat? Fucking name? pussy. Fritz. Fritz. And she just bit the shit out of the top of my foot. Damn. You got a picture of Fritz? I do not have a picture of Fritz. Can you take a picture of Fritz? No. We are talking I'm the, wrestling. I'm, I'm doing my <laughs> research for my girlfriend. She's a cat lady. She. She, she needs to know if there was a cat. She needs to know check my Facebook, cat. Vince. There are albums. You'll find it. Uh, I'm going to tag onto that. I'm swallowing the fact that Theory got beat like a hard dick by Brock Lesnar and then Claymore out of nowhere by Drew McIntyre. Oh, yeah. Brock was swinging that damn briefcase like crazy. God damn. I thought you were yeah. about to say Brock was swinging that dick. Like, we're like wait, hold no, on. I was time not going to say that. Just... <laughs> I, I, you, you know me better than that. I wasn't going to say that. Hold on now. I mean, he did come down big dick swinging energy, just scared the shit out of Paul Heyman. And then Theory hey, came hey, in and he's hey, like, well, mm-hmm. you boys at Paul <laughs> mm-hmm. talking a lot um, of shit, Paul. I've been looking for your sweet and sour chicken ass. <laughs> <laughs> Same energy. Uh, uh, I'm going to spit Dan Housen losing the FTW title match so that Hook could come out and beat Ricky Starks and get his daddy's belt. However, I'm swallowing Starks' promo. It was a, again, they had some great promos on the show. Starks is a fucking star. He cut a hell of a promo. It's his My Time Is Now promo. It wasn't last month. It wasn't last year. Or it was last month. It was last year, and it's now. And then Powerhouse Hobbs just clubbing the shit out of him out of nowhere. So we're going to get babyface Starks. I have no idea what the fuck is going on with Team Taz. I don't care. Hook wasn't even really a part of it. Now he's the champion. But, yeah, the feud between Starks and Hobbs, I'm in on that. And Hobbs looked like a beast clubbing him. 
Starks cut a great fucking promo, which is what he's really, really good at. So I was feeling all that. Is there even a team test? It feels like tag team test. No, it just feels like it's Hobbs and, and Hook and Hook's to sleep half of the time. Well, no, it was Hobbs and Stark. They have been a tag team. They were running. Hook went off. He would teamed with Dan House and he did his own thing. He like kind of left the group. But then so Dan House and lost and Starks is out there. He's like, listen, I want to be a fighting champ. I still got some. Let's go. And then Hook's music hits. And out comes Taz's kid, reverses uh, whatever Starks' finisher is called, and puts him in. I will give I will give Hook this, even though I'm not a Hook fan. Changing the Taz mission to Red Rum. I'm with that. Great name for a finish. Hooks the Red Rum in, chokes him out, new FTW champion, and then walks out. No, no interviews, no nothing, just takes the belt and leaves. Interesting. Yeah, so. keep that. Gotta peep that. Uh, TC, you got anything else? Spit or swallow? Uh, let me let me get just this swallow out the way, and I'll go on to this spit. Uh, the Kimbe Mutombo was at SmackDown in Atlanta, so no, no, no. swallow that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. And the him versus Omas is just talking to each other. That's what, That's what Theory needed. He needed the Kimbe Mutombo to watch his head so he can like block all these haters out of his way, man. Because the whole roster is out. No, but uh, I'm gonna spit this uh, Viking Raiders and New Day. The match was good, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't care about the match at all because I have not cared about the build at all. To I've never match. cared about the Viking Raiders or the War Raiders or the War Machine see, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, War called. Raiders, it was cool. I never cared for them. I thought they were lame. I, I like Vi- I like Viking Prophets. That shit was cool to me. I enjoyed that. Nah, I wasn't feeling. See, that I either. wasn't feeling that. I am, however feeling what they're doing here them going all in on having the viking raiders be the dominant team that the war raiders were beat the shit out of him grab the shields and double shield smash the fucking chair on his leg x sold his ass off they bashed it they shield bashed him (laughs) like xavier woods went in there like this is a video game and i'm go i'm all in like let's go Got shield bashed, got his ankle smashed. Kofi got tossed out the ring. Like, I'm all for them actually having a dominant beast of a tag team on Monday Night Raw that is actually hurting people and doing some shit. Or well, Raw SmackDown. There's no brand split. It doesn't matter. Um, and (laughs) it's gonna be a good team if the Profits win at SummerSlam to then transition to. Uh, if they are beaten down teams like the New Day, who is outside of the Usos, best team in WWE. When uh, when when do we start being honest about the Street Profits, man? Right. What yeah. do you mean? Who 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 been better than them outside of the Usos in the last three four years? New Day. Okay, outside of those so, two, those two, those two are automatic. Yeah, like, top three teams, absolutely. But outside of Street Profits, like I, I'm ready to, I'm ready to crown them. Like Street Profits probably got the <laughs> best match I've ever seen in person. Money in the Bank with the Usos, like that shit was. That shit oh, slapped. That shit fucking slapped. That shit was live. That was the best like, fucking match of the night. These these dudes is cold, and Dawkins is showing y'all something every now and again. He's showing y'all like he y'all be no talking about shit. Tez, but. Look, you see Tez and got swole in the last like six months, put on like 20 pounds. Yeah. I'm all These boys it. is ready. Like, who 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 gonna be better than them going forward the next okay? Game? They got it. To add to that point and kind of like go back a little bit to like the six star picks when I mean, Vince McMahon got. Do you think they'll split up the tag titles at some point and the, the main titles? Do you think they'll all ununify them? I always thought they were because they still both are active. True. Yeah. The fact that they have not made one belt gives you the sense that they're going to split those belts up again at some point. I really hope so. Especially with Roman. Because my whole thing is like, there is no fucking way to get rid of the WWE title. There's no way. They could get rid of the universal title. I don't think they get rid of that. They just keep it separate. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Um, we'll 
do you have more tc just, no i'm done I, I okay done. then i'll just bang all these out uh i'm swallowing also another promo jungle boy and christian while i'm spitting the fact that they made the whole luchasaurus thing convoluted where i was really loving what he was doing he felt like kane he felt like you know that monster that they needed and then they just kind of went back on it jungle boy came out called christian a pussy they had some back and forth shit that i really enjoyed where they got personal um which i always enjoy and then last for AEW, and this is just so i can say the name uh, i'm swallowing the match between thunder rosa and mayo yamasta uh in a very bad metallica uh your master um that it was a good match i've seen some stuff that she's done i actually talked to warren about it she's really good didn't quite translate as well as i would hope but it was still a damn good match so uh and it was like the only real good women's match that AEW had this week so I'm going to give them that. Was it the only women's match AEW had this week? No, they had Anna Jay versus uh, Ruby Soho in the main event of Rampage tonight. Rampage doesn't exist. It ain't a thing. Let's it's stop having like the, the women come over from Japan having never wrestled in front of a, a, a national audience before and then their nerves clearly showing when they have to go out and wrestle on live TV. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, yep. let them get some, you know, a little bit of a couple matches under the belt. Like, yeah, especially when cohesion. you throw them into the main event. Yeah, especially like they're out there messing up, like clearly botch. I've seen a couple botches from that match. Didn't really look good. Hikaru Shida looked like she wasn't ready just yet. And she should have she should have been one of those people. And like, I don't know, like all the, the women from Japan need to yeah. be like. Yeah, like let them get some reps shit. in. Like, let them let them kind of get familiar Oscar with the audiences the they're working. Yeah, Oscar wasn't perfect from the, from the jump. Kyrie, Eo, none of them were perfect from the jump. They all took a minute. Especially Eo, she she mm-hmm. had to turn heel for her to like really click. Uh, I'm also There's spitting Jeff heels. Jarrett, just being there. Are you gonna but, Jeff Jarrett? Oh, I'm dude, meant to Jeff follow Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett. Pause. No, I meant to. You know, that's my dude. I'm swallowing him getting super kicked. But so the fuck out that I have been watching him in WCW 1996 and it has soured the shit out of me on Jeff Jarrett. I, I don't want any more Jeff Jarrett. I'm done with Jeff Jarrett. Hey, nah, great. That sounds that, that sounds like something that you should be spinning because of Travis, not because of anything Jeff Jarrett did. And Jeff Jarrett did what the fuck Jeff Jarrett did in 1997 that made me not want to see him anymore. That has nothing to do with Travis. Was Jeff was, Jarrett was he trying to for his soldier trying to cuck for his pug? For his booking back then? Yes, 100%. Uh, trying to cuck Mongo that. McMichaels, 85 Bears, Hall of Fame alum. Uh, trying to he get into tried. the Four Horsemen when he didn't belong. Yeah, no, he did. He did it. But uh, all that, I'm sick of Jeff Jarrett. And now he's here in WWE and also Ric Flair's last match, beating the shit out of old men and then coming out and talking shit about uh, following rules and whatever. Like, I'm spitting Jeff Jarrett, but already? swallowing him eating the super kick. The match happened say? already? The match happened already? No, it's Sunday. No, it's Sunday. Oh. Oh, I can't wait. I got to find a stream. <laughs> I cannot And then wait. My, my last spit is the fact that we haven't seen them for fucking ever, but apparently QT's group of Anthony Agogo and Where whoever the fuck, the fuck else, they, did? They, they still exist because they showed up on Rampage. And Why is QT Marshall still getting TV time? What if we yeah. told y'all about this? Cody you left. That- you can let him go. Bro, let him go <laughs> be with Cody. Like, nah, even nah, Cody, like Cody was talking. To us. Come on now. He might be good. At, he could be a coach. He could be like, yeah, he could yeah, be Cody's center. coach. He could be the new Arn for Cody. Nah, fuck all that. No, nah, don't let him be on TV ever. Anyway. <laughs> but he can go to Performance Center, get a better paycheck, get, train people, probably do a, 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 a partnership with his school and get some people to go. And, is it and his get school or is it Cody's school? Training. It's both of their schools, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I think he should just quit as a wrestler and just focus on the school. That's just my personal. You're trainer. Yeah. TC, what was your favorite show you watched this week? Uh, what was my favorite show, man? Better Call Saul, honestly. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm also uh, going to say that no Better spoilers. Call Saul. You didn't even watch it. Show. Better Call Saul? Yeah, I already finished it. Mm. I watched it. Like is that's that why, why I got the reference. Is that why you didn't get to watch SmackDown this week for our show? No, I I watched it like 
when I got home on Monday, I rewatched Raw. I didn't watch Raw live at all because I was at work. And then I came home and I watched Better Call Saul. Uh, I'm going to go with an actual wrestling show and I'm going to go with Monday I got Night a wrestling Raw. show. I wasn't done. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, Raw. I, I'm, I'm gonna give it the Raw. Just like the energy of Madison Square Garden changes everything, every single time. So, I'm going with Raw just because Riddle got stomped the fuck out, and that was my favorite thing to happen this week. I'm gonna go with Raw because I like more stuff on Raw, and there was no traders on Raw like there was on NXT. So, uh, TC, go ahead and plug your show. Tell everyone about Young Kings Wrestling. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, y'all can follow Young Kings Wrestling at YK Wrestling everywhere, including Instagram. Uh, there was a situation that occurred a couple, not a couple years ago, it was definitely last year. Uh, Instagram lynched us during Black History Month, took our page away, and so uh, we had to start all over. So we back there's some hoes. At, there's some hoes at YK Wrestling, uh, Instagram, Twitter. That's really it. Uh, nobody posts on Facebook. But Instagram, Twitter, if if y'all listen, um, I'm going to just be real with y'all. If you are one of these uh, people out here that love them some Tony Khan, don't follow us. I am ta- I talk shit. <laughs> Didn't you have a dude like make a YouTube video out of y'all's like podcast yeah. episode and talk shit about, about, about there, y'all? It, you know, it was really funny. It was during the whole Big Swole thing, which yes. is why I, I don't watch anything AEW anymore. Uh, I have no choice but to know what goes on because I follow a lot of wrestling fans on Twitter. So naturally, I'm going to know and be able to keep up that way. So it's fine. It's, it's people there I like, people there I like watching, and I'm able to keep up with what they got going on that way. But that's the whole thing. We stopped watching because of Anthony the whole tirade against Big Swole. I don't play that shit, especially when it's a black woman preaching about getting representation. And then there's a black dude goes and makes a whole video calling us clowns because of what we said in defense of Big Swole. You know, you made it when you got some haters. That's it's not uh, the first time I've yeah, seen, it was, it was seen, little, seen some Young Kings haters. Yeah, not they the first time. Speaking of Young Kings. A lot Kings, of them be, be listening to our show and speak, yours. I'm Vince, speaking of Young Kings. Vince, uh, this is not Young Kings, and we're not trying to spend 10 minutes closing the show out. We are plugging socials. So you invite me on here. And you <laughs> well, Listen, when I said it is my favorite part of your show, it is my favorite part of your show. Like, I am always excited to know what tangent y'all are going to go off on in the middle of plugging your socials. Like, that was not a shot. That was that was no bullshit. I see that timestamp, but I'm like, all right, what are they going to talk about? Like, <laughs> I get excited. Um, can we get some LWO inspired Black Lives Matter t-shirts? How much will I have to commission you to make that a thing? Maybe just for me. Um, seeing as how uh, the LWO colors are also the Pan-African flag colors. Well, not the full Pan-African flag colors. but Two-thirds. That red, black, and green, they are black, uh, black-related black colors, so it is a possibility. But they just they won't be LWO inspired. It, it would be like you know black and yeah, yeah, I will still give you my money, sir. Take my. You can tell money. people it, it, yeah, but you know. All right, maybe, all right, cool. Maybe, uh, I was gonna say if if we we're gonna make it LWO, like for you, would he have to like put a little eagle over the L, kind of like y'all did our flag? Damn. And follow me on Instagram and he Twitter. He said it was cultural SCS appropriation. <laughs> Matt always I always wonder that. Why does the Mexican flag look like Which one came first, flag? though? The Italian flag. Sure, first. Italy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Italy. I'm not sure. There's a lot of comparisons comparison similarities between a lot of country flags. Did they colonize Mexico, too? Like every other fucking Italy? nation in Europe colonized the whole world? Well, well, the Spanish did. The Spanish did, yeah. Oh, yeah, obviously. But... Good question. We well, should look Sp- that shit up. Uh, you know, Spanish and Italian are very similar languages too, so there has to be something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if that's know. the case, then it makes perfect sense why Legato joined up with Tony. They were just coming back home. Damn. Joaquin ain't even say Mexican. You, <laughs> Joaquin, <laughs> he, <not. laughs> he Filipino. Wait, is he? 
I've seen that Legato yeah, Del can, Fantasma. Like I've that. seen the logo, Vince. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at SES Vince. Uh, the link tree in my bio will take you to everything straight talk. It's better swallow, create your world, smacking the raw, all that good shit. I just dropped a uh, latest episode this past Monday, NBA free agency. Go ahead, check that shit out. We talk KD. Yo, where, where do I got to get in my list? I totally forgot about it. Uh, let me get your list by Monday. All right, I got you. Yeah, just DM me your list. Uh, so, so yeah, NBA free agency, talk Bulls free agency. Next show coming up, I'm going to be recording tomorrow with uh, Katie Kinsey, Bay Bay. We're going to be doing a fantasy booking of the Women's Tag Team Tournament. Uh, I should I was gonna do a mean thing? girls podcast too. No, 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 man. We 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 will include you. I'm gonna do a straight Saul podcast. Uh I'm doing uh what else the fuck do I got cooking up? I got some shit cooking up. I got get your bulls podcast coming up, uh Mamba rankings podcast, which is the list that TC's talking about. So we got some basketball content coming up. So uh yeah, link tree slash SES Vince, subscribe, follow, you know, hit that bell notification. Send me a buck or two through my cash app at S- hashtag SES Vince. You know, go go ahead, do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram, I'm doing Instagrams. Uh, Matt, talk about that too. Uh, you talk about that because I don't do Instagram. So uh, we got our Instagram, uh, the Creation World Instagram taken down, just like Young Kings Wrestling did. And uh, now the Smack and Raw podcast Instagram will be the creation world instagram i do not remember what the handle you guys are using for that is it's uh so okay so as of right now it is smacking raw smacking raw pod but it's gonna become its creation world on instagram and twitter so that's gonna be the joint handle so if you want to follow the show on instagram it's gonna be its creation world it hasn't changed the, uh, the branding yet but go ahead and check that shit out you can follow me at my regular Adam at TTRDDR on Twitter only. Twitter and TikTok at Smackin' It Raw. Twitter is at Smackin' Raw Pod. TikTok is at Smackin' Raw. Facebook.com slash group slash Smackin' Raw. Creation World is the banner under which the Smackin' Raw podcast exists. You can follow them at the Creation World on Twitter, at its Creation World eventually on Instagram, and at creationworld.com. T H E C R E A T I A World for that Twitter for now until it changes and facebook.com slash creation world. And I'm going to have to learn how to do all of that brand new and fast again, because Man. now my whole spiel is fucked up. I was definitely expecting it and it slowed down. So I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So. That's because everything's all new and I have to relearn what everything is now. Cause it's not the old, the old way. Yeah. But so. now be even more impressive because your linguistic skills will be on full display once you've mastered it. So, uh, shout out to Kate. Uh, <laughs> for the thespian TC Fontaine, this went longer than it did on my show. It did for Daddy Delgado Vince. I am the warden Matt Ritter, the patron set of podcasting, and we are smacking a raw, the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub. The chorus, not a spear. <laughs>